Good afternoon, and thank you for joining the Beyond Plastic campaign today for the second in our series of webinars sponsored by Butterfield Bank. I'm Katie Berry, part of the Beyond Plastic campaign team, and I'm joined by colleagues Eric Hetzel from Bermuda Environmental Sustainability Task Force and McLean Smith, a fellow volunteer who will be pres presenting today. This is our second webinar of a four-part webinar series created in collaboration with the BEDC and sponsored by Butterfield Bank. The first webinar covered the problems with plastic and the health, environmental and social effects that can arise from plastic exposure. A recording of this webinar is available on our Beyond Plastic YouTube channel and on the BEDC YouTube channel. In this webinar today, we will be diving into how you as an individual can reduce your single use plastic using some local alternatives to plastic. If you have questions, please send them through in the questions chat. We will address these at the end of the presentation as we want to be able to help to move you away from single use plastic. Eric, take it away. Okay, thank you very much, um, McLean. Yep, so I just wanna explain who we are. So uh, for those of you that were with us for the last webinar, you would have heard this, but and we'll go quickly through this, but we are a collaborative group form between KBB and BEST, uh, we came together to focus on this one issue so that we can get the message out. So, and we are supporting the government's uh, stated goal of reducing single-use plastics in Bermuda, and that will begin this year. Uh, government, the minister made a statement in the house just this week, as a matter of fact. Uh, McLean, next slide. So we have four main areas where we're focused on. One is innovation, and that means looking for new products and new ways to, uh, either for individuals and for businesses, to uh, you know work without single-use plastic. Um, change is difficult, but change also presents opportunities, uh, and especially for business opportunities. So we have seen um, you know many new innovative ways come about. Uh, in recent times, and we hope that um, you will talk with us and we can talk to you about ways to innovate new businesses around this uh, opportunity. Um, the other area where we're focused on is education, and this webinar is an example of you know the outreach that we're doing. Uh, we've done other webinars, and we have a, um, a large public education campaign that started in February. Hopefully, you may have heard our radio ads or seen our adverts on TV or social media. So that's part of our public education. And that's gonna continue um, for at least a year and hopefully for two. Um, the other thing we're doing is trying to inspire people by showing them what's possible so that they, uh, as individuals and again as businesses, they grasp this opportunity to move beyond plastic. Um, and as part of the last uh, thing that we're doing is looking at legislation and other jurisdictions because Bermuda is not doing this alone. Um, most countries now have have some kind of um, single-use plastic legislation uh, reductions restrictions in place, and Bermuda again is you know about to embark on that same path. So um, there are you know, better ways to do things sometimes. And so we're trying to look at the, the better ways and the, the best ways to move forward. But it is abundantly clear now that it is important that we do move forward on this and people are supporting it. Next slide. So just to, again, to go back through a couple of quick stats, 50% um, of the plastic that is produced in the world is actually used for single use purposes. and that means that it's going to stay in the consumer's hands for about uh, on average 10 to 15 minutes at the most. And after that, it just becomes litter. Um, and some of that litter, about um, well, about two and a half percent or garbage, it equates to a garbage truck a minute, uh, winds up in our oceans. And you see the results of that plastic in the oceans washes up on our beaches. So everybody's familiar with that. Um, and as a result, there's going to be more plastic in the ocean uh, than fish. It's predicted by 2050. That's a hard thing to get your head around. But, you know, in your lifetime, you've probably seen an increase in plastic on the beach. Um, 
and that plastic is also in the hedgerows and everywhere else. It's also in your body. Um, a critical fact to know is that before between uh, or before 1950, certainly before the war, there really was no significant plastic. This is a recent habit that um, we've developed. Plastic was developed for all the right reasons, but unfortunately it's been misused. Um, it's very durable, uh, which is great, uh, but because it's very durable, it hangs around a long time, basically forever, pretty much. Um, so we um, need to move on. So next slide, please. And this is the stunning statistic is that plastic production is going to double. So if we think it's bad now, uh, just hang around a little bit longer and it's going to get worse. Next slide. And the key thing to remember is it doesn't go away. So right there, there's a picture of a coffee cup. Uh, that's the inside of what you, most people think is a paper coffee cup. But unfortunately, inside that most paper coffee cups is plastic. And what's left when that degrades away, the paper, is basically just plastic. And that plastic will be in the environment for, you know, thousands of years, potentially, maybe forever. Next slide. So, uh, again, most people are familiar with the plastic they see in the environment because it surrounds us. Um, that has an impact on animals, fish, um, and the animals that live in the oceans. Um, and now it's also been shown to actually be a air pollutant. So plastic is in the air we breathe and that affects all living creatures as well, including you. Um, the other issue is that it's a climate change uh, issue because uh, plastic comes from petroleum based sources. And because of that, it's estimated that um, Greenhouse gas emissions related to plastic production and use will increase to about 20% of greenhouse gas emissions in the next uh, 20 years. So it's a huge climate change issue as well. It's also an economic impact because uh, plastic is actually a subsidized industry and it actually costs about 10 times more to actually uh, deal with the plastic than the first cost of it. So it has huge economic costs. I mean, you're familiar obviously with the uh, cost of picking up the trash and picking up the litter and things like that, but also it has an impact on your health and that has a cost associated with it. So it has huge economic impacts. Part of that last point is uh, that on the health impacts, if you live near a, uh, point of production or uh, disposal or refinement, um, then you will be impacted to a greater extent. Um, so if you live in, say, um, New Orleans or Louisiana, where there's huge petrochemical companies and plastic companies, uh, if you live near one of those, you're going to be impacted to a greater extent. So that's a social justice issue because a lot of times those are marginalized communities. Um, also, the West um, collectively has been sending the, our um, waste plastic to poor countries in Asia and now in Africa, um, and that's a problem because they can't deal with the, our plastic. So it's a social justice issue as well. And lastly, it's human health. It's a huge human health issue. Um, and again, I would encourage you to watch our first webinar um, to you know, reacquaint yourself with the human health impacts. But almost every day, again today, we've seen two articles in the newspaper about human health impacts of plastic. Next slide. And at that point, I'm going to turn it over to McLean. Thank you. Thank you, Katie and Eric. Um, so firstly, Bermuda is trying to move in the right direction. Um, with the single-use plastic elimination policy. This is just a brief timeline um, on when the first policy came out. So in 2018, uh, the promise to eliminate plastic was first announced by Premier David Burt, and he stated that SUPs will be eliminated by 2022, so this year. Um, and then in 2020, uh, Bermuda took a huge setback as COVID-19 enforced that single-use plastics were more hygienic than 
bringing a reusable item into a store. In 2021, the government released a draft of the single-use plastic policy and opened it up to public consultation, where they received a lot of feedback from the community. And then the policy paper was um, basically showed three phases. So uh, where phase one was the consultation, phase two was prohibiting the importation of certain single-use plastics, which we'll get into in the next slide, and also allowing a suitable period to exhaust existing stocks. And then phase three begins in 2023 with the recommencement of public consultation, seeing how the first round of bans went for business owners and individuals. Um, they'll receive feedback from the community and then they'll return to the next round of banned items. If you're not familiar with this policy, you can just find it by Googling single use plastic policy Bermuda or go to our Instagram page at Beyond Plastic Bermuda and click the link in our bio. And this is a list of items that are up for elimination. One that may stand out to you is the oxidegradable and biodegradable plastic. It's really common to see this type of labeling on takeaway coffee cups, containers, uh, even utensils. However, the issue is these items are not biodegradable in the natural environment. You couldn't just throw it on the roadside um, and it would just biodegrade naturally in the trees and in the foliage. The reason for this is because this type of plastic requires a certain uh, level of heat and perfect conditions, which can only be found in chemical, uh, sorry, compostable um, industrial recycling facilities. And these labels are no better for the environment than the average single-use plastic. It is a method of what we call greenwashing. And if you're not familiar with greenwashing, this is a term used to describe the process of misleading a consumer into buying eco-friendly products for economical gain. On the left um, in the circles are common things that you might see on products, common labels. Uh, don't be fooled. These are labels um, that are found on items that feel a lot like plastic, but again, they are not biodegradable in the natural environment. But the certification you see on the right are regulated and the proper certifications for a product that can biodegrade in the natural environment. So just keep a lookout if you're buying products for your business and do your due diligence and double check on the actual labeling behind those products. And a common question we get is, so what about these compostable fiber-based containers? Well, the wonderful thing about these containers is that they are heat and liquid proof, which makes them really attractive for takeout food. However, they're made up of PFAs, and that's also a known carcinogenin. And when this compostable container breaks down the environment, they are referred to as forever chemicals. They never leave the earth. The very compounds that make up PFAs um, and make these containers everything that they're used for, heat proof, liquid proof, are also the reason why it's really hard for them to naturally break down in the environment. It's also important to recognize before we get into a list of alternatives or how you can um, live single-use plastic free, that we understand sometimes these plastic free switches aren't possible depending on your lifestyle. And we aren't asking you to ditch plastic altogether, but beyond Plastic Bermuda's goal is to make the transition to a single-use plastic-free island a lot easier for individuals and businesses. As we go through um, a list of alternatives to plastic products, we do try and focus on products that are available locally and are cost-effective for your business. So if you know someone that sells alternatives to plastic or has a plastic-free business model that they've been um, using for a while, the Beyond Plastic team is always looking for new products to recommend to consumers and to the public. So um, let's start off with some easy plastic-free alternatives to your everyday when you are out and about. The plastic lined paper, paper coffee cups. I'm sure some of us love to visit our regular coffee shop on the way to work or during our lunch break. And the easiest swap you can make is just to bring your own reusable coffee cup. The great thing is a lot of these reusable cups are leak proof and they keep your drink hotter or colder for longer. If you are a business, there's an opportunity there to provide an incentive, maybe 10 cents off your coffee if you bring your own cup. 
The other thing is plastic bags. Try to remember a reusable grocery bag. Paper, canvas, or cloth are usually the best. I usually keep mine in my car, or my bike. Um, there are also stores that offer small incentives if you bring your own bag. For example, the marketplace takes 10 cents off your order. Another big one is plastic utensils and straws. There are reusable options that can be washed if you're getting hot food takeout from a store and bring it back to your office to eat. Try investing in a reusable cutlery kit. The photo in the bottom right is from People's Pharmacy. It's just taken from their website. Um, and there are also reusable straw kits. So top left is from a smaller store called uh, Little Rose in Bermuda. And another thing to mention is the best materials, stainless steel, glass, bamboo, canvas, paper. So any alternative made from those types are usually your best bet. Another one is Tiffin's. It's also the photo in the top right. Uh, some stores will allow you to bring your own container in. If you're going to uh, a grocery store to get hot food out, or if you're a business, consider taking the Tiffin weight uh, before filling it to encourage customers to bring their own container. There's also reusable schemes where consumers can return to a container, can return their container and have it filled for a discount. Uh, we'll highlight some of those types of business models in the next BEDC talk. And uh, lastly, drinks. Often when you walk into a store, the drinks cooler is filled with plastic bottles and it's so easy to just grab your favorite plastic, um, your favorite drink if it's plastic is the only option. Although there are alternatives, Coke cans in standard bottles, aluminum water bottles, um, and it's important to mention that only 9% of plastic worldwide is recycled, whereas over 53% of aluminum and glass are recycled into new products. So try choosing options that will not directly contribute to waste, especially here in Bermuda, where we do not recycle plastic. And some of us have heard of reduce, reuse, recycle, but we often forget refuse. Try and remember to double check for plastic utensils after picking up takeout. I know sometimes we'll get our takeout and we'll go straight home to eat it. And then we've just got this buildup of plastic utensils in a drawer in our kitchen. Um, if you just double check beforehand before leaving the store or maybe refuse them in the notes section of your order if you're doing delivery. Plastic bags are often given automatically even if it's for one or two items. If you know you don't need a bag, just refuse. It's often something you need to get into the habit of remembering, but once you do, it's really easy to eliminate single-use plastic. Another area for uh, plastic-free alternatives is shopping and in the kitchen at home. The most obvious tip is to bring your own shopping bag, as mentioned before. Another one is buying in bulk. Um, and instead of prepackaged meats and cheeses, which are usually wrapped in plastic, try going to your local deli and seeing if they have the same options. When storing food at home, investing in glass or aluminum airtight containers can help you cut down on plastic bags. Buying local and organic foods are one of the best ways to cut down on plastic packaging that you often find in grocery stores with foods that are imported. Rather than buying plastic water bottles in bulk, try filling up a reusable water bottle or many reusable water bottles and take those with you when you leave the house. Um, they do have fancy water bottles where there's a filter built in, but filtering your own water is just as fine. There are some plastic fibers in tea bags as well. So loose, loose leaf tea is another option. And ensure your trash disposal system at home um, includes blue bags, blue recycling bags. And tips for when you're in the office. If your office has a coffee machine and it uses Keurig pods, for example, try switching to a brewed coffee pot instead of using a paper filter, um, instead of using the Keurig coffee pods and use a paper filter instead. And if you're getting takeout for lunch, bring your own container or cutlery. I have here BYOC. And a lot of companies have an ESG strategy, environmental social governance strategy, or a sustainability report. 
making sure your office has a waste reduction plan in place or proper recycling bins in the office is a really good method of ensuring your ESG strategy is progressing. Lastly, buying refillable products, uh, cleaning products and hand soaps or detergents. DE and Mortimer um, has a really good program where you can refill your cleaning products that you buy from them for a lesser price. Miles also offers a refill program. So just ask around to your different vendors. Things change and sometimes you start embracing uh, new sustainable business models where this is also an option. The classic three words that we hear all the time, reduce, um, replace, and reuse. Reducing our use of single-use plastics through these tips we have provided is a great place to start. Um, start replacing those plastic items with alternatives and reuse those alternatives as often as you can to avoid, and avoid any type of waste buildup. And after giving you all these tips and all this information, um, what can you do next? Well, change is consumer driven. So simply turning down a plastic bag at the grocery store, remembering to decline takeaway utensils, asking cafes if they can fill up your reusable coffee cups, or even picking the aluminum Coke can um, over a plastic bottle. Uh, these are all small changes that can lead to less consumption. Educate your friends on this topic, businesses. Um, our next BEDC talk will highlight from local and companies abroad that have embraced a single use plastic free business model and try and integrate some of these individual practices and tips that we've mentioned in this webinar into your business model. Makes it a lot easier for the consumer um, and eventually it will be a dual benefit for the both of you. We are happy to answer questions specific to businesses. We are also happy to continue these lunch and learns at other companies around Bermuda. Show your support for the single use plastic elimination policy, share it on social media or write to news outlets. Also be ready to give feedback in the upcoming consultations after the first round of bans. If you know someone with sustainable alternatives on the island or new business models, introduce us so we can get their product out there and highlight what they're doing. And finally, before we finish, this is a quote that we use quite often on the team. We don't need a handful of people doing zero waste perfectly. We need millions of people doing it imperfectly. So try your best to reduce single use plastics. It's a lot easier when you, when you start doing it. And thank you very much for having us. We welcome the floor to any questions. Please check out our social media pages to keep up with our campaign. Share what you like with your network and spread the news about our upcoming events using the hashtag SNTSUP. Say no to single use plastics. Thank you. Katie, I'll let you take over. Thank you, um, McLean and Eric, for um, all of that information. Um, I think we expected um, a lot of people to have questions. So we're going to start uh, there. Um, and the first question is, um, is there anywhere in Bermuda to buy ground coffee that doesn't come in a plastic bag? I know that there are some metal tin brands, but I feel bad recycling those because it feels like such a waste. Um, well, I'm, I think I'll take that one. Um, so you shouldn't feel bad about the tins because they actually can be recycled um, in Bermuda um, in your recycling. Um, and and so we encourage that. Um, certainly Rock Island um, and uh, they do their own. Um, uh, they, what do you, ah, oh, sorry, Colby. losing words. <laughs> Uh, they roast their own, and um, and I know that you can speak to them about using a reusable container. Um, and um, and I think Devil's Isle would probably be open to that as well because they roast their own. Um, but as far as um, buying in the grocery stores, um, it there isn't. They are all in some kind of plastic lined 
container and that's to do with freshness because obviously the minute you grind coffee um you it loses its freshness and so they're trying to contain it in the plastic um but definitely moving towards um getting uh coffee beans that have been roasted and then grinding them yourself is probably the way forward but the tins are recycled in bermuda so that can go out in your normal recycling eric or mclean do you have anything to add uh, no i filled up my coffee just this weekend in a tiffin and so they Definitely Rock Island will refill your container. Um, Eric, do you want to just explain what a tiffin is, just in case people aren't aware? Yeah, tiffins are actually a very useful item, actually. And um, I think that McLean said that they're available at People's Pharmacy, right? So, I mean, what they are is they're stainless steel, usually. Those are the best kind. Um, and they usually have these little clamps on the side to keep the top on. Um, and they're very, very useful. Um, I mean, they're great for storing food, great for storing, well, whatever. They can store anything in them. So, they, and most of them are airtight and liquid tight. Um, some maybe not as liquid tight as the other. It just depends on the, on the brand, but they're great. Yeah. Um, so the next question is, is there anywhere that an, an event planner can look to purchase reusable cups? Um, now, I know we've had the ones that we found that are made of aluminum, which are actually recyclable as well. Um, but, McLean, are they on island or do we bring those in through Amazon? You brought them in. We brought them in. Okay. Yeah, those are Ball, uh, made by Ball. Is that the brand name? That's the brand name. Yep. Okay. Um, but also, you know, ultimately, um, you can use, if you're doing an event, is speaking to Goslings and um, the other um, and boroughs and um, the other wine and drink companies. They have glasses to hire um, and they will take them away and wash them. And that is a perfect system that we would definitely encourage event planners to use um, is to, and you can rent them even if you're not um, buying alcohol from them. Um, from the companies, they will actually let you rent their glasses. Um, and so that's a great option. But obviously, if you're in an environment where you don't want glass, um, you're really looking at, uh, I mean, a, a heavier plastic that can be reused multiple times. You don't want the kind of uh, single use plastic cups because once they're heated, you're getting that plastic. Um, Eric can probably talk a little bit more in depth about that than I can. Um, but these new cups that we found um, through Amazon are actually made of aluminum. Isn't that right, Eric? Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah. There is a, and it's a good point uh, or time to mention, there's a webinar today at um, three o'clock local time uh, presented by an organization called Upstream. Uh, it's called Upstream Solutions. So if you Google Upstream Solutions, you can probably still register for that webinar. And that's about events, about how to reduce single-use plastic at events. Um, and they also have a, a website where they have, you know, uh, tips. But they have a dedicated website or um, webinar today. Maybe you can get it after the fact. I don't know. But, um, you know. Yeah, and I think this is one of the things that we um, would like to encourage is there's actually a gap in the market for somebody to start a business where they supply cups and other um, things for events and take it away and clean it and um, so that every event can become um, zero waste and have less impact. And so, you know, this is definitely something that we would encourage entrepreneurs in Bermuda is to look at that model. And because we're seeing that um, popping up in the around the world where uh, new businesses are started and they're completely about supplying um, products that can be used multiple times for events. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're in the process of talking to two major events in Bermuda right now who want to become uh, more plastic free or completely plastic free over time, for sure. So, I mean, it's definitely an opportunity. 
Um, okay, so the next question is, I noticed that you recommend aluminum food storage containers. Are these safe? Eric McLean? Aluminum food storage? Uh, it's more stainless steel. I, I don't, I'm not aware of any aluminum ones, I and mean, it may exist. Um, most of the food storage containers are stainless steel usually, so or glass. And uh, you know, it depends on where you are and what you're doing with those. If you're at home, the glass containers are really nice, and they're available. Um, you know, a lot of different places sell those. The hardware stores, like I know, Master sells them. Um, I was in Oak Cafe, the new cafe, the other day, and they're selling them. Um, and those are great for home or in the office. Um, they're a little hard to transport, and that's where the tiffin comes in because it's much lighter. Um, so it's a much easier thing to take with you. Um, so the next question is, um, it says, I remember when I was young, not overusing paper was a big push. Now it seems that we're going back to paper or wood options instead of plastic. Is there a reason that this was so heavily pushed in the 90s? And is there any foreseeable consequences to going back to paper and wood options? Um, you know, one thing that that kind of brings to mind is, um, you know, is plast the plastic industry, the which is part of the petroleum industry, has been pushing plastic on us for a very long time, um, as and it, it was portrayed as a better substance. Um, we now know better, um, and certainly all the ocean plastic that's washing up on our beaches in Bermuda tells us that. Um, but um, paper and wood. You know, we know a lot more than we did about that. We are certainly using. You think in in an office environment, we use a lot less paper than we have than we did previously, thanks to technology. Um, so that's one thing to consider. Um, we have sustainable um, forests and things, but you know what is we need innovation and we need um, different business models and certainly the reusable business model as opposed to single use, which the paper and the wood often is single use, it is better that we move to a more reusable model. Um, I know that Eric probably has more to say on this subject, so I'm going to hand over to him. No, I think that's it, it in a nutshell. I mean, I mean, you're right. If we just simply move from a, you know, uh, whatever the number is, a hundred thousand plastic containers to a hundred thousand paper containers, will we have achieved anything? I mean, we will have achieved something. Certainly, it's healthier. Um, it's you know, it's better for the environment. But is it a perfect solution? No, not by any stretch of the imaginations. The the perfect solution is reusables. So single use should only be really for the at the last you know, resort really. So we have to try to eliminate waste, period. I mean, that's part of our goal. Um, so the l question here is, can a link for the registration for the webinar Eric mentioned be sent? Yeah, maybe somebody, uh, yeah, a little nervous about, we've had so many tech problems today going offline and uh -huh. uh, going up. I think it's, it's. I'm pretty sure it's upstreamsolutions.org. If somebody can type that in and... Uh, I'll find it and put it in the chat, yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. Thank you, McLean. Welcome. Um, so, hang on a second, let me see if there's any more questions. Are there ways that um, we can reuse containers? Sorry, I don't quite follow this. Hang on. So what is, how do we find good reusable containers to use in takeout? It's a question. I mean, there are providers of, I mean, again, Tiffins are very good. Um, glass will work, but it's heavier, so it depends on the circumstance. Um, I mean, really, uh, the other one that is being used, and again, we're, we're uh, 
you know, we're going to talk about this more in the next webinar, so I don't want to, um, you know, make you wait per se, but um, um, the other item, a lot of the businesses that we've seen are using real, reusable, washable pro, uh, polypropylene, which is plastic. So is it, again, perfect? No, but that polypropylene containers that they're using in these reusable schemes, it can be washed at least 400 times and, you know, usually more. So those are much, much better for the environment. And then hopefully at the end of their life cycle, they're disposed of uh, or recycled. So, um, so polypropylene would be one substance, glass, and again, stainless steel would be the, the things that we would look to. And we'll give you examples of businesses using those in the next webinar. Um, as an outside vendor, the greenware cups melt and are hard to store. Any advice or other companies? Eric, do you want to explain the issue well, there? Well, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm a fam familiar with the company Greenware because it's we've looked at um, all the companies that claim to have, um, you know, plastic free. Uh, I'd have to look at the actual product. Um, and when you say they melt, I assume that's at high temperature. It's probably a cup that doesn't have, maybe that cup was designed for cold. Um, there are cups, there is a, a lining called ISLA um, that is available. And I can, there's a company, um, well, there's several companies using this lining now. Um, and other linings that are not plastic in cups. Um, and we're trying to find, um, we've spoken to the manufacturers. One is Colombier, and they are um, European, maybe the Netherlands. And they have cups that are lined with this ISLA uh, coating. And those won't melt because um, we have them here. Um, we've tested some cups and they work fine. Uh, you know, for coffee and soup and things like that. Um, if you take a cup that has no lining, the problem is, yes, it will absorb water and oils and things like that. So they need some kind of linings, usually, um, you know, a non-plastic lining. Um, I think, again, technology is moving very quickly. Um, there is a type of plastic called PHA, um, not PLA, don't be confused with it, because PLA is a bio, supposedly, that's an in, industrially biodegradable plastic that you see a lot of. PLA is not suitable in our environment because we don't have an industrial composter. It's just plastic to us. But PHA, um, that's another one you're going to see more used in things coming in the future, I think. And that's a completely biodegradable uh, you know, type of compound. But this other one is also at least ISLA. And, and there's a few other ones as well. You're going to see more and more of these comp, um, types of cups. Um, unfortunately, we may have to develop sources in the UK, frankly, uh, and Europe, uh, because the US is a petroleum nation, right? They they make and they sell petroleum. They want to sell more more petroleum and more plastic. So they're conflicted to some extent. Um, on one hand, they're recommending, or certain organizations in the US are recommending to give up plastic, uh, but at the same time, they have a huge industry lobby in the petrochemical industry that's lobbying you know, against that. So um, there's more products coming out of Europe, frankly. And um, although, having said that, again, we, um, some of the wholesalers, I know Mortimer has talked and brought in um, supplies from uh, an American company in uh, Virginia, located in Virginia, and those are completely plastic free. Um, Medical House, I know, has some uh, containers. It's a it's a uh, it's a line called Vanguard that they carry, Eco Products line, and that's plastic free. Um, so again, but it's um, some of those, you have to look at the individual containers and see, are they coated with something else or, or are they uncoated? If they're not coated, they're probably not going to hold hot stuff. You have to find something that's lined with a, a non-plastic lining. Um, but they're, 
they're coming and it's more becoming more and more prevalent. I mean, hot stuff is the tricky bit, uh, much more difficult than a you know, cold substance, a sandwich box or sushi container or something like that that's not wet. Sorry, is that? Is no, that no, 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 that's perfect. And the thing that I would like to say is that we, meaning Eric, <laughs> will will review any products that you might use to help understand if it's plastic or if it's not. Um, you know, Eric's done a lot of research over years of time, um, and he can look at a product and deduce whether it's being greenwashed or not. Um, I'm starting to learn, but I'm nowhere near where he is. Um, and so if you have a question or you have a product that you think might work, send it to us, email it to us, and the team at Beyond Plastic can review it and give you feedback on it. Because there is a lot of greenwashing that's going on out there. And so we are here to help kind of navigate that because it is tricky. Um, and certainly the thing that we really want to encourage in Bermuda is the reusable model. Because ultimately, you know, if you have something, um, you know, I've just noticed that it says asking for Ashley's lemonade stand. Um, and obviously, you know, the containers of lemonade is um, how they make money. And, um, and so providing some kind of maybe a reusable container that is branded with Ashley's lemonade. And then when a, a person brings it back, they get a um, discount of some you know, in order to incentivize people to be more thoughtful, to use their own reusable lemonade or smoothie containers. And certainly I know with my kids, um, they love nothing more than a milkshake from Buzz 24 Hour SO. And so they have their reusable smoothie cups or milkshake cups in their backpacks and they can pull it out and go in and, and use them there. And so part of it is it's encouraging the individuals, um, encouraging everybody in Bermuda to think about using reusable containers. And um, that should hopefully benefit everybody because there is a reduced cost to um, the business because they're not having to buy cups. Um, and it is a cup that, because it's a reusable cup, hopefully you will keep it and it won't in, um, end up in the environment or in the incinerator and it'll be used time and time again. So we're definitely trying to encourage uh, businesses to incentivize individuals to use reusable containers. Well, the other good thing about that is, I mean, you've touched on a good point is that this is good business. Um, so if you, if the customer has a branded cup, they're more likely to come back to you to have it refilled, um, you know, or a branded food container. So they're going to come back to you to refill that container. So that's good. Uh, the other thing is by not having to purchase those throwaway items, um, you're saving money. So, um, you know, California just brought in a law that uh, requires businesses to ask uh, whether or not. Um, takeaway food gets a utensil set or not, or food sachets and things. And in studies they did, they found, uh, and I'm always dangerous to quote numbers from memory, uh, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna say it's between like 5,000 and $7,000 a year, these businesses on average saved uh, by not including utensils. Um, so it's good business, it's not only, you know, good for the environment, it's good business. So you get the customer coming back and you know, you save money, so. Um, McLean, you did a study on this as part of your masters. So why don't you tell them a bit about how um, taking out the cutlery saves, makes good business sense? Sure. Um, so there was actually a local restaurant here that decided they would put on Sargasso an opt-in program for their customers. So essentially, if you go to this restaurant, um, delivery via Sargasso. You go on their website, you pick your food out, and then you get to the checkout, and they ask you if you want utensils or what types of condiments you want. Um, so that restaurant did it for two weeks, and they saved 176 utensils over those two weeks, which is really great. And I think they're still the only restaurant on the Sargasso platform right now that's actually um, doing that program, and that's an opportunity for other restaurants to follow suit. 
Thanks. Um, so somebody's helpfully, um, thank you, Joella. Um, the website is www.upstreamsolutions.org. That's the webinar for later today um, to do with events and how to make the move away from single use plastic. Um, so I've got another question. How can Bermuda get into recycling plastics? We did this in the UK. Why doesn't Bermuda currently recycle plastics anyway? Eric McLean, do you want to take this? Um, I think any of us can probably field this question. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, unfortunately, recycling was a greenwashing, effectively, campaign mounted by the plastics industry, and they're still still pushing it, unfortunately. But all, of all the plastic ever made, uh, only 9% was ever recycled. Most plastic is not capable of being recycled. Uh, practically speaking, some of it might be technically feasible, but very little of it is. The only one that um, has any chance really of being recycled is PET, P-E-T, plastic, which is, think of a plastic water bottle. And even those can only be recycled three times. And after that, it has to be uh, either downcycled or disposed of. And by downcycling, I mean turned into furniture or wood or something like that, plastic wood. Um, so recycling is a myth, unfortunately, um, and it's widely acknowledged now that the plastics crisis, we cannot recycle our way out of this. Uh, we just make far too much single-use plastic. It might be applicable to multi-use plastic because we still, you know, 50% of the plastic, even if we got rid of all the single-use, there'd still be 50%, you know, that's makes up cars and airplanes and refrigerators and all the other hard goods that we have that have plastic in them. So there's a lot of plastic that still can, you know, we still need to recycle and it might be applicable for that, but not single use. It's, unfortunately, it's just not a way for us to move forward. Um, and, and in the single use category, again, you know, the big issue is health. Um, I'd encourage you to go back and look at our first webinar. Um, you know, anything that's in food contact has huge health impl implications. Um, so there's another article in The Guardian today um, about health implications of plastic. You know, it's just every day there's another health story. Yeah, and I think you're going to see plastic recycling in other countries disappear. Is I think it was a solution that was put forward to reduce landfill. Um, and it's been proven that the recycling of plastic is not a very effective solution. Um, and so um, I think that what you're going to see, and certainly I bought some bananas in the UK last week, and the plastic bag that the bananas were in, and we realized that it was only in that bag for branding reasons, so that they could charge more because it said organic on it. Um, that was made out of a plastic that is actually home compostable. So I think what you're going to see is that where possible, that kind of plastic packaging is going to be replaced with um, other materials that will hopefully be home compostable because ultimately that's where you're you're wanting to move to. And I think plastic recycling, while lots of governments are talking about it, I think it, we're going to see that shift away from that over time. Um, now, I've got something here in the chat that says, please remind us if the Im implementation of SUP legislation is on track as per the policy paper and SUP policy recommendations. Eric? Um, well, the, the minister spoke in the House uh, where day we Thursday, so he spoke Monday, was it, or last, last week, the end of the week, yeah, Thursday or Friday, he spoke in the House. And um, what he did is he announced the um, results of the public consultation, which was very detailed analysis showing that most people support the legislation. Um, he spoke broadly about, um, you know, supporting business and supporting the environment and trying to balance the issues. Um, there was pretty good summaries in the newspaper, so you go back and Google that, you'll see what was said. Um, but I mean, it looks like it will be implemented in some form in this year. Um, it'll most likely be staged. I mean, certainly we would recommend it be staged because it takes a lot of adjustment. Um, 
so I think that you'll see the, the low hanging fruits, the easy things to give up will be done away with, you know, restricted first. Um, and then the, over time, they'll move to the, the more difficult things. But it seems to be on track. I mean, that's all we can say. I mean, yeah, I think in our correspondence this week with the government is the legislation is being drafted at the moment. And so you would have expected it to be that they're pushing hard to bring it in on time. It is politics. So we all know that, you know, you can have a pandemic that suddenly comes up and suddenly you're not doing the things that you thought you were doing. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that can throw it off course, but we do know that the legislation is being drafted at the moment. We do know that they intend to do a phased approach. I would have thought that um, plastic earbuds, which is on the list, will probably go immediately because most um, of the cotton earbuds that you get in Bermuda now are made of cardboard in the middle. They're not plastic. So that's a pretty easy win. Um, obviously, there are things that we know our business models are very dependent on styrofoam. You know, so most of the grocery stores use a styrofoam tray um, in order to put meat on. And there is not a great alternative that is. There are alternatives, but there are there are issues with the alternatives. And so we expect that to be a phased um, approach. And you might it might be that that is that legislation comes into effect with that item in 18 months time. Um, and we know that the government plans to revisit things um, continuously. Um, a bit, I think they're sort of judging it a little bit like the legislation that they have about you can't import carrots at certain times of the year and, and things like that is, you know, is they want to be responsive. You know, they don't want to penalize people. If you cannot get an alternative, um, then, then there's going to, there has to be flex within the legislation to take care of that. Um, and, uh, certainly I would have thought that the legislation will be in the books, um, you know, this year, as is said, but the nuances will be as to the items and when they come into effect within that legislation. Wouldn't you say, Eric? Yeah, no, I think I agree. Yeah. I just want to go back to that um, before you move to the next question to, um, go back to that recycling question again, because that touches on that social justice issue as well, that um, even the recycling, so people in Canada, the US were dutifully for, I don't know, whatever, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, you know, putting their recycling plastic in all these different containers, but they never knew that most of that plastic was actually just bundled up and shipped to Indonesia and China and where it went into open landfills. So now that people know that, people are pretty upset. And, um, you know, and now because the Asian countries have started to say no, that the Western countries can't ship their garbage effectively to them any longer, the, mm -hmm. the Western countries are trying to ship it to Africa and the African companies or countries to some extent are fighting back, but actually they're being pressured to actually accept Western, you know, shipments of plastic. So, you know, that's part of the social justice issues around plastic. Sorry. Um, so the next question is, how can grocery stores be encouraged to utilize reusable options and refills? If I take containers to the grocery shops, there's not much that can be used for, they can be used for besides fruit and produce. Well, so one of the things that is definitely a problem with our grocery stores is space is, you know, they are restricted by the space that they have, and, and some have very limited space. There isn't room to grow, um, which in a different country, you might have a different, um, you, you might be able to just expand and, and, and take on the kind of bulk container reusable options, refills type thing. Um, certainly, we think that there is an opportunity in Bermuda to offer the public um, a bulk buying option. Um, but it would probably have to be outside of the existing grocery store, um, grocery stores. Um, and, and so we hope that that is something that people are looking at. And, and because certainly we think that that is something that is going to, the individuals want, um, 
and uh, and over time, I think it's also going to change as well, um, even within the grocery stores. But as far as like buying in bulk, um, it's hard for the grocery stores to really embrace that model within their small footprints. Um, McLean or Eric, do you want something? To, do you have something to add to that? I'd say there's definitely an opportunity for um, somebody to open a bulk buying store. They have it in Canada, Bulk Barn, I'm sure many others. Um, and I'm surprised somebody hasn't here already, but it's a perfect opportunity to lessen plastic use, have people come in and buy things in bulk that aren't already packaged in large plastic containers, because even when you are buying in bulk, they're either individually packaged water bottles or a large Cheetos container that's all plastic. So uh, things like that. I'm I'm sure somebody will come up with something in the future, but there's a grocery store waiting for it to happen on the South Shore. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's really that kind of innovation that we're looking for. We're trying to foster and encourage in Bermuda is for people to rethink the models. And and certainly, you know, we see that like Miles has reusable detergents and, and Mortimer's has a program as well. Um, but we do understand that the grocery stores are very limited by the size of their footprint. So it's hard to add in, you know, being able to have that the, um, here there's um, I've recently been in the States and, you know, you'll go into some of the grocery stores and you'll be able to have your container and fill it with rice or, you know, other dry goods. Um, it's hard to know how to squeeze that into our grocery stores at the moment. And that is all the questions that I have for the moment. Um, Eric or McLean, do you have anything else that you would like to add? Uh, no, just thank you, everybody who's on the webinar. Appreciate your attendance, and um, you know, embrace the change, and uh, you know, seize the opportunities that come out of it. Would be my, you know, recommendation. Yeah, um, thank you for listening, and also um, our contact information is up on the screen. So feel free to reach out with any questions for email, um, direct message on Instagram or Facebook. We're we're always available. Um, I encourage you all to sign up to the third webinar, which specifically looks at different business models that um, are, have been embraced around the world, companies that um, have used this as an opportunity. Um, so, and thank, thank you for joining us today. And thank you to Jamila Lodge and her team at BD, BDC for inviting us to speak and to Butterfield Bank for making it possible. Together, we can move beyond plastic, Bermuda. Thank Thanks. you. Have a good day.